Hello, writers and crafters. I'm Valerie Sun. And I'm Eric Mertz. And this is episode 108 of the podcast, and it's March 28th as we record this in 2023. Today, we are going to be talking about website basics, but it's part of a three-part um, series that we're going to do this month. And uh, the first is going to be on the website basics. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about SEO and how that works and why you need it and what it's for and all that. And then we'll follow up with a uh, marketing from the ground up. Um, tutorial. Tutorial, yeah. <laughs> and, like that, we'll uh, call we're it. kind of calling this series Marketing You Own. And we distinguish marketing that you own as being, you want to take take this? Yeah. So I think it's important to distinguish between like an ad that you run on social media is, is marketing, but your social media platform falls entirely under that social media companies. It's theirs. Like they own the platform. And at any time, uh, Facebook or Instagram or or whatever platform you're using can can just I, I don't want to say they could pull the wool out from under you, but you're there is the there is the possibility that the site that platform could change fundamentally and what you're doing marketing wise would change. The marketing that you own and control is the marketing, the content marketing that you're doing on your website. Um, that is that is your real estate, and as long as you are maintaining that website. Um, that's marketing that you own. So we're going to talk a lot about like building the foundation, uh, your foundation, um, kind of from the inside out. All right. Well, um, announcements. Um, I have a group coaching cohort that is going to be starting in a couple of weeks. Um, it is normally my group cohorts are three months long, but, um, because we're heading into summer. Um, Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. I, I'm only going to make it two months because I've got some travel that I'm doing in June. So the cohort's going to be, um, roughly April 11th through June 7th. And right now the, the cohort has chosen to meet on Tuesdays at 2 PM Pacific time. Um, but that can change. Uh, the new cohort can change it to any day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, during, during my Pacific daytime hours. Um, and then we can just decide on that together, but the sale price is $333 and that's meeting weekly for, um, group coaching. So you can go to my website, valerieisan.com slash shopping, and you can find the group coaching uh, sale price there. Any updates on your side or announcements? Not, you know, not much. I am, you know, kind of head down getting my website together. And uh, that's, that's pretty exciting. But that actual, uh, you know, that manifesting in something real and tangible is still a couple of months away. So I'm, mm. I'm, I'm working hard in the present for the promise of the future, Val. That's uh -huh. just what, what I'm, it's what I'm doing. <laughs> I like that. That's kind of a good mantra. <laughs> Working hard in the present for the future. Is that what you said? Yeah. Nice. I mean, I'm working on I'm working on a novella that I love. I mean, I'm loving the 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 writing that I'm doing and and so that's that's keeping me grounded. But in a business sense, just like you know, my website, I just got a site map from the web designer, what my new site's gonna look like and its flow and mm. and so met that very ground like basic stage. And again, I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to, I'm being optimistic. Um, and it's going to be a couple of months, but. It's going to be great when it's done though. I believe Sweet. so. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done I'm much. Knocking on, that was knocking me knocking on wood, on wood people. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't done much. Uh, my birthday was yesterday. So I took the day Yay. off or no, actually it was Monday. My birthday was Monday. So I took Monday off and I had a party on Sunday. And so it's been kind of like a stretched out, like week of celebration. <laughs> so mostly I've just been like visiting with friends and, um, you know, doing some coaching and stuff and, and working on our taxes. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I've got so, that coming this weekend. Um, that's pretty much what I've been able to accomplish the last week. It's just some coaching here and there and taxes. And it just takes so much longer. I thought it was so cool. I had like this, I had the spreadsheets and the P&Ls for everything all set up way in advance. This was the first year I've ever done that. I was so proud of myself. And then for some reason, like TurboTax is like, I don't know, doing Ali was working on it for over four hours yesterday and he's still not done. So I'm not sure what is going on with, because it didn't like when he started putting in my schedule C stuff, it was slightly different from last year's schedule C. I don't know. And so I right. keep saying uh, there's an error you need to, you know, and so he's been trying to like fix it or, you know, it makes some sort of adjustment somewhere uh, to reconcile it. And it's just not working. So he's like going to take all my stuff out and just re put it in. So that's sad. I feel bad that he messed up or it messed up like tax. during my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and mm. I did, um, I did tax layer. I tried that out this year too. Um, I think we're going to stick with turbo tax though. Yeah. Um, it just seems to that's... have a, a better, not infrastructure, but like interface, you know, like yep. the usability is a little bit easier makes more I sense. Believe so. like there's a lot of, you know, tax stuff is weird. And, and I mean, most people on the planet don't understand some of the verbiage. And right. so TurboTax has always been really great by having like, you know, if you hover over, it'll say like what this form is for, or, you know, why right. you would do this, or does this mean me? Oh yeah, it does mean me. Cause I fit into this category and, but tax layer doesn't do that. So I was right. kind of flying blind through most of it. <laughs> I like that TurboTax just asked you questions like, did you do this this year? Mm -hmm. You know, reasonable things that you might, that might come up once. Like we sold a house last year. So mm -hmm. this year it's going to ask, you know, did you sell a home? And I will say <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, and it's like, I think it's, it's intuitive in that way. I get a little suspicious where it's like, you know, it's, it, I feel like it's, it's guiding me and I like to be in a little bit more control. Like I, there's a part of me that says, why are you guiding me toward this? Like, and who, mm -hmm. like, who's behind that? So I get a little <laughs> conspiratorial, you know, that we're going to, we're going to give you the illusion of ease and take more of your cash. You know, that's kind of what I, <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to try a different one to see like if the um, return would be the same and it was, so it no. wasn't like a, yeah. The return you're optimistic <laughs> it's rarely a return over here it's is it never a return. it's never been it hasn't been a return in years so well no this how... year 2023 i'm going to start paying quarterly taxes yeah so, i don't know how to do that even yet, though but... i pay quarterly taxes dutifully it's still like it still never comes out the right way so hmm. Well, that doesn't bode well. Thanks for encouraging me. Eric. Sorry, it's facts of life. <laughs> okay, we're not here to talk about taxes. All right, taxes are... what are you reading? <laughs> well, I am still working on fairy tale. Okay. Because I love my dear mother, but she will. She works at a bookstore, and she must bring me three to five books a month. And in the last week, she brought me a couple of anthologies that I had wanted to read, and so. Right as I'm at the stretch drive of the book I'm reading, she brought me um, a Doctor Who anthology, the 11 Doctors and 11 Stories, the, the 50th anniversary collection, which is like super exciting. And so I had to take a couple of reads of a couple of those stories, you know, it's just they're just short stories. Mm -hmm. uh, so I read I've been reading that and I'm also reading um, Dispatches from Anaris, the the Tales in Tribute to Ursula K. Le Guin that was published by uh, Susan DeFreitas. She's a Portland um, editor and, yeah, and publisher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that anthology I've I've really wanted to read for a, a long time, and I ended up with that. So, yeah, I'm. I've All been... right, I'm gonna I'm gonna out myself here. How do you spell Anaris? Um, it's A N A R R E S. Okay. <laughs> And it's a great anthology. It's super cool. It's super, I mean, the people who are published in it are, you know, a lot of locals and that's exciting, mm -hmm. but it's just like the timing of the world, right? Like you're getting yeah, down it to jumped the, the stack. It had to it jump, jump the stack. Uh, and she was so happy to give those, you know, she, oh, I found these for you. These are, I figured you'd like these. And, um, 
you know, my the book I'm reading kind of growled at me, like, come on, I'm almost there. You're almost there. You're, you're almost done. Um, but yeah, so I'm now reading three books at once. What about you? <laughs> well, um, not to brag, but... <laughs> oh, not to brag, I, but brag. I finished two books this week. Um, Pilgrimage by J.F. Penn. Um, which is it good? I've her. never read her writing. I don't know. Um, I've only, I don't read thrillers much and that's kind of her jam, but, um, I did read her, uh, dark fantasy, um, trilogy map walkers. That was really cool. I liked that a lot. And I've read, um, one of her novellas, uh, day of the Viking, I think. Um, and so in terms of her fiction, that's what I've read. Um, I've read, I think everything of her nonfiction, except for the stuff that, you know, like I haven't read Secrets of Self-Publishing because I'd already read like Business Mastery for Authors or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. Like it was, right. Um, and then I read um, These Small Things by Claire Keegan. It was a birthday present. It was a short book, like 100 pages, 120 pages, something like that. Cool. Um, I read it just in a, in a morning. It was just delightful and sweet and lovely and touching and just wonderful. So those were what I just finished reading. So then I started reading um, Black Horse by Carol Johnstone, which is that thriller that um, I think it, I don't know if it's horror, but it's a thriller book that I won from uh, Valerie Brooks's newsletter. Cool. So that's what I'm reading. That's oh, I neat. also I finished it. reading, um, I guess maybe three books I finished this week. I also finished reading um, Secrets of Hartwood Hall, I think it's called, by Katie Ludson or something. It's a Victorian Gothic cool story, you know, the governess love that it. works in the creepy house and falls in love with a gardener. <laughs> I, it was a great book. I loved it. <laughs> sounds like a familiar story. Mm-hmm. I, like I love that, that familiarity though. you right. When you jump into something and you like, you know, 80% of it. And it's that 20% that surprises you. Mm -hmm. I, I, something comforting about that feeling. All right. Well, shall we get into this, into the nitty gritties? Oh, let's do it. Why not? All right. Um. Well, website basics. So everybody needs one. Right. And well, so for a while, arguably, people were saying that you didn't necessarily need one. All you needed was a way to capture email addresses and that you could do that like with landing pages through ConvertKit or MailChimp or something like that. But in lieu of this conversation, you know, we would like to encourage you all to own your own platform and have your own website. And I think one of the most important things to have on a website is a way to capture email addresses right. so that you can start your mailing list and and build your fan base. Right. I think it's entirely possible to successfully do an element, I mean, elements of authoring, author businessing without, I mean, I think you you could do elements of it. But what we're talking about is Again, if you are relying on outside something outside to 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 gather your emails or or do those things, then you you're putting your faith in something else. There are um again, this sounds like a, it may sound silly, but those other means could go away. The the terms of those other things can go away. You're talking about um, the landing pages or like the yeah, author pages like, at BookBub, say, or right. I mean, Amazon. and think of the scenario that I that I um, was thinking of is like, let's say you write erotica, and if you write erotica, you are you know obviously there's a huge market for it, but that market isn't for everybody, and a lot of marketing will will say, hey, this is like no erotica, like well, so. There is a scenario that could play out where maybe the platform that you're using doesn't no longer wants to support erotica. Where are you at that point? You have all of your, you know, sort of digital real estate in someone else's. You're basically like renting an apartment at that point uh, instead of owning uh -huh. a home. And, you know, I don't like 
someone might hear this and say, well, I don't write anything fringy. I don't write anything risky, so it doesn't apply to me. But again, if you listen to any of the big sort of big picture marketing people, they'll say like you want something that you own, like that you that you have control over because otherwise, you know, someone else has control over it and you're on their terms. So when we say a website, like what we're talking about is that URL, uh, which is you. So for me, I have Eric Mertz writing and Eric Mertz author. They're different, but one of those is my business site and the other is my author site. Uh, those are mine as long as I pay for that re to renew that URL. And I will control what's on those things um, and capitalize on that because that's, you know, we're talking about a business. Yes. What's your, what is your, your URL? Same as yours. Uh, Valerie Isan is the author services, the coaching and the editing. And then Valerie Isan author is the, the author page. <laughs> right. And so for that, like, you know, when that's yours, then you can, you, you know, the sky's the limit and it's up to you what goes on that site. I mean, sites have structure. I always like my my designer that I'm working with now is it calls it well the the general term is a site map, but it's basically you know how everything filters down from that main page from the valerieeson.com or or ericmertzwriting.com. That's your top URL, and then from there you decide what you know what are the pages like what page you know what are you going to have on your website. And at that point, it's kind of sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. I mean, yes, there are some, uh, in terms of navigational flow, there are some um, like preferred um, ways of doing things. Um, you know, the, back in the day, the newspaper lingo is is whatever is yeah, the most important yeah. needs to be above the fold. So right. of course there's no fold in your website, but it is a scrolling thing, you know, so whatever, or even if you don't have the website that scrolls, if you've got one that has very, you know, static pages that you go to, whatever is the first thing that people see when they open up your website. So, right. you know, maybe that's a picture of your latest release. That's what's most important. Or maybe it's the reader magnet because you're really trying to drive people to sign up you know, on your website or, right. you know, maybe it's a picture of you because you're really working on, you know, branding and getting out there and, and showing your face more often or whatever it is. And so you can change that up. Whatever's most important at the moment can be above the fold. Right. Yeah. I, I use that newspaper lingo in my head too, where mm -hmm. it's, it's anything people would have to scroll down for, you know, down at the bottom. Um, so I think, yeah, so you're right. There are some general, like your front page is the is the front page of the newspaper. I, let's let's keep the newspaper part of this conversation. Okay. I think that it's fun for me. I went to journalism school. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I think it's important. Like the, it, it, the top thing is like the front page of the paper and that, that, that front image. And for, for the most part, for me, it's, it's static. I never change the front page mm -hmm. image on my site, either one. It just doesn't. It never changes. But if you think of the pages on your site, these are the static pages that never change. Those would be like the sections of the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, so what pages are on your site? Like what are your... I mean, other than the homepage, then there's an right. about about me page. Um, and so on my, on my author page, that's just kind of a a bio really. Uh, but on the author services page, it's more my philosophy, you know, about coaching and, and accountability and stuff like that, which I want right. to update, but yeah. So I have a, an about, which kind of, um, doubles as a philosophy page. Although I think I want to add a philosophy page, you know, that really, um, highlights like my coaching style and well, philosophy. Um, right. I have a, so which, okay. On my author services, one, I have a coaching page. I have an editing page. Um, I do have a, a podcast, um, slash news, um, kind of that's my blog, which I don't 
really blog anymore. The podcast is my blog. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I'm sure I've got more. <laughs> I mean, I've got my shopping page too. And I also have the retreat page. Um, so that's kind of what I've got on, on the author services one. And then on the author page, I've got same, you know, and about, but then also books, which goes into um, the way I have it set up is when you go to the books page, there's a gallery that shows you um, a button to push for fiction, a button to push for, you know, memoir and, um, and, and then it goes to another whole page. Um, so the categories of books, I guess. Um, right. yeah, the author yes. page is a little bit less robust, you know, there isn't really right. a shopping right. page, but there should Yeah. Be. So I think, and I think one of the things you're, I'm glad, you know, yours kind of makes the most sense to talk about because that, you know, there are the, the, for most people there's, you know, there's that, the homepage, which is the hook, the front page. It's what gets people to, to click. Um, and then most people have that about, you know, about me, here's who I am. Uh, this is what I do. You know, this is, this is where you choose kind of your personal branding. Mm -hmm. you know, this is, are you going to brand yourself as kind of that, you know, soft at, you know, folksy, you know, comfortable person. I've seen some authors brand themselves, you know, they've got their arms crossed and they're standing by a pile of books. They're very professorial. Literary. Like, yeah. Yeah. So you choose, that's how you, you know, kind of define about who you are. And you've um, got maybe a tagline, you know, if your, yeah. if your fiction is all about, you know, romance, second chance romance or something like that, you might have a tagline that refers to that or, you know, stories of heart and connection or uh, do you have there a tagline for your paranormal stuff? Uh, no, like my author site is pretty dormant at this point. Actually, mm -hmm. I was going to do some rebranding on my author site because, um, it was, I, it felt like the most important thing now, like now that my website website is being rebuilt, my, my business site, like my, my author site can kind of take a back seat, but, and that was one of the things that was missing. Like it didn't have, like, it, there was no, there is no, like, here's, here, you know, Eric Mertz, author of these things. Here's what the books look like. Here's, here's the promise. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think you bring up also a good point in that not having a, my author site, but both of my sites use a blog. Um, I'm especially blog heavy on my business site because that is what drives SEO soon to be discussed <laughs> on this <laughs> very channel. But <laughs> Authors, I've seen people do that differently. Right? If you're running a web, uh, you know, if you do web videos, if you do a podcast, if you do, um, you know, if you're an author that maybe does some comic books, I've seen some authors who do like a gallery of images. I think, you know, you want to use, after you tell people, after you hook people into what you do and who you are, uh, people want to see what that looks like. Um, or sounds like, or, you know, reads like, and that's kind of the next thing, like the next page you're going to want is a showcase of some kind. So for you, it's the podcast or um, other people, it's a bookstore, book gallery, something like that. Um, One idea and, that I have that I haven't done is to create reading lists and have ooh. them all linked out with affiliate links marked appropriately, of course. Right. Um, but you know, have a both on both sites because it can on the on the author site it can be like you know my favorite memoirs or you know my favorite women's fiction or right. favorite paranormals or something like that by by genre and and then on the other for writers website could be you know writer tools or you know the best book about how to write memoir or you know that sort of thing right. Right. And these are, again, choices you're making about, like, it's, it's, I mean, if you think about it, again, from the principles of a newspaper, those sorts of things like lists or images are, I mean, everything on a newspaper page is designed to draw the reader's eye to whatever that story is, if it's, or an ad or something. Like, you're trying to get, 
you know, everything is to try to draw those eyes and draw that attention. Like one of the things you'll track and we'll talk about it um, in, in SEO is, and, and, and further in marketing is like how, you know, what are people, what's the reader or viewer experience of your website? You know, are you giving them, do people come to your website and look at the front page and then click off? Do they click on the blog, read once and then walk away? You know, those are things that you begin to to pay attention to and the and the best websites. And I think you've probably seen, you, you know, seen dozens of them. And as have I are the websites that people come on and they're invited to keep looking, keep exploring it. Are you interested in my fiction? Great. Check out my podcast. Oh, if you're like my podcast, I'm also going to do this thing. Uh, read these articles about me. I think what you're trying to do, and that's part of content marketing is just keep people in your space for as long as long as long as you can. I know that's like gets to be kind of silly at a certain point, but um, you can only do so much. But I was on a website for a guy. I'm actually I do some writing for uh, some some big publishing companies. And one of the guys that I was interviewing for a, a chapter, I write I write chapters in, a, in books for these for these folks. And I was looking at one of my subjects website and I was on it for a good half an hour. Cool. And part of it was that I had to do research. Mm -hmm. I, I had to write about this person. But the other part of it was it was just masterfully designed and it highlighted everything about this. This guy was a compelling character to begin with, but it, this took advantage and highlighted everything about him in such a such a compelling way. I was on it forever. And I'm sure that that's experienced a lot of his uh, traffic um, experiences. They just, people stick around and read it. Um, so yeah, and that's a big factor again in SEO, how long people hang around. So I wonder what else, um, I guess a good tip then would be that if you're looking around at other author websites and finding something that you like the look of, um, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, like borrow from that model, your site after the ones that really interest you and make you stay on the site, looking around for a long time. And what is it about that site that kept you there? Can I do something right. similar on my site? Right. And I think it's important to look at two things. If you're going to look at what to imitate uh, or who to imitate, I think number one, genre matters. Right. So if you're a horror author, you don't want to look at a romance author at what they're doing. You want to look at a horror author. What colors do they use? What images do they use? How do they depict themselves? If you're a horror author, you don't want a picture of yourself sitting cross-legged in the in the wildflowers, right? Because that's not <laughs> a horror author, but that's right. perfect for a, for for your romance author. So you want to look at and imitate those things. But I think it's also important, be realistic. You know, if you are a first time author, you've got one book, you've got one blog and go look at authors who are relatively new and see what they're doing to capitalize on what they have. The last thing you want to do is go look at somebody like the guy that I was writing for. I got really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I don't want to say jealous, but I got really like a little bit of FOMO, like, oh my gosh, like, look at this guy. I don't have this. I don't have this. <laughs> I also don't have his professional credentials and experience either. So it's not realistic for me. So find an author who's in a similar place to you, or maybe look for someone who's a step ahead of where you are and see, you know, here's where I am and here's where I'm going and create something that that is going to get you there. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good yeah. point. That was one other thing I wanted to say. Um, Who built your site while you're jogging? That was what I was going to ask, or that was what I was going to go for. Was like, okay, so how do you how do you set up a website if you don't have one? You know, where do you go? Like at the time when I set up my URLs, GoDaddy was like the main place. That's where you what went and you thing? got your. That's who hosted. So um, I still have GoDaddy. <laughs> Uh, but there's Bluehost. There's, I mean, I don't know. There's so there's many. Host Gator. Host Skater. Yeah, so Is that what we said? Host Gator, host like Gator. the like okay. the animal. Alligator. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to buy your URL. You need to you need to. So that is, um, 
let's say you want Eric Mertz writing. When I wanted ericmertzwriting.com, I had to go in and claim that domain as mine because who knows, there could have been another Eric Mertz writer out there who spelled his name the same way. And, and that would have, I would have had to come up with a different URL. There's actually an Eric Mertz that does upholstery in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was doing can, if I was doing upholstery, I would have had to come up with a different URL because that person owns that URL. And when you own the URL, you're only buying it for a short, you're buying it for like a two year period of time in most cases. And it costs about a hundred bucks, but so once you claim the URL, you have this, you have the digital, you have the digital sort of address, but you don't have the real estate that comes with hosting. So that's where you go to something like Bluehost or um, HostGator or GoDaddy, whoever that is, and you, you that they host your site. So it's basically you saying, hey, I've got this URL, let's put it on your um, service and that hosting service usually provide, you know, they provide, you know, the, the assurance that the site's not going to crash. They provide space for you to upload things because like when you upload content, it's going to basically their, it goes to them. Um, so once you have the, the, the URL and the host, it's up to you then to build it. And there's a, we could talk for days on how that happens. Um, for me, you know, I'm having my site built by someone right now because my site is already enormous. And so someone built, like for me to build that would take months and months on end um, because it's, so I need someone who can do that more efficiently. But if you're just starting out, it's perfectly fine to, to you know, take a basic site builder, create a three-page website and and start there. Because once your site is up, you can keep adding to it. You might, let's say you start out with, you know, your front page about me, my books, my blog, and you, you run on that for six months, but in six months, you and a friend decide to do a podcast. You can always go add another page that says podcast. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. So the site is as flexible for the most part as you are. True. Um, I had a friend um, build me a, so my author website trajectory has been thus. I had a blog spot, bl like blogger blog for the longest right. time before I like put out the author shingle and that's just where I blogged. So I didn't right. own my own site. It was just on blogger. And then a friend said, Oh, let me, you know, make your website. And she did it on WordPress. And I Ooh, never could dun, like dun, dun. get into it. You know, I just really liked the interface of blogger. I couldn't figure out how to do it. And you could, you know, I could have stayed with blogger and just owned my own URL because again, it was just a way that you could add as many pages that could be your website. So if you already have a blog that you love, you know, if, as long as you buy the URL that, that can work. Um, right. Then I had a friend build me one as a present he created the whole thing for me but it was on an interface that i knew nothing about you know that like web designers used i think it was called concrete five or something yeah and you know a lot of people don't know anything about concrete five so i couldn't like even go to the author space and be like how do i blah 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 so i had to constantly you know go back to him and i'm a tinkerer i really like to be able to put my hands in the website and like change things around and add this and take this off and change this thing so i ended up going with squarespace after all those years and i really like squarespace i did some research between wordpress squarespace and i think it was wix and weebly those were all kind of um like in the running, like major contenders for like template website um, companies. And I did the research about what I wanted and what I liked and, and, and I ended up going with Squarespace. So I really like Squarespace. It is easy for me and I've been using it for years now and, and I have two websites under Squarespace, but I have the hosting through GoDaddy. 
And I had a, but I, so think, when I, I my, think Squarespace does hosting though. So if you wanted to just do one, I think thing it does too. And just yeah. don't even worry about it. Like you could just do everything through Squarespace and those. So th those are great points. And I'm glad you brought those up. When you build your site, uh, I use WordPress. I've used WordPress forever. Anytime anything goes wrong with my site, any of my techie friends say, you really got to get off WordPress. WordPress is open source. Anyone can use it, but it is very, it's a lot more technical. And if you don't have tech, if you're not willing to get technical with it, it's not drag and drop like a lot of other stuff is where oh, you can just works. grab a form and mm -hmm. drop it and do it that way. Um, it can be, an, it can, it can inhibit you. And I, I certainly do have moments of, uh, head banging on this desk when I say like, why am I using a more complicated something? I just want something simple. Um, and you know, for basic needs, if you don't have, if you don't want to spend all that time, um, if there's a certain thing that those other easier drag and drop forms can't do and you, but it's perfectly okay to start off with something simple. If you do want to get techie with it, move, you know, you can shift that to something else. But for the very beginning, yeah, go easy. Just drag and drop, make it make it happen. And then especially if you're a newer author and you don't really know what your brand is and you know you're trying oh, to figure yeah. out like how do you want this to look? And so you're trying on different appearances after you know what I mean, trying to settle right. on something that you really like. And I didn't like to have to wait for the web designer. You know, I would send like yeah. a monthly email. Can you change this? And I did this and it looks funky. Can you fix it? You know, and whatever, like, I don't know how to make it be the way I want it to be. So I just sort of put the content on there and then he would have to go in and like clean it up. But you know, right. I wasn't right. his only client. So sometimes that was laggy, you know what I mean? So right. I, I disliked not having control over it. And, and my learning curve was deep so i chose squarespace because that was easy for me to manage by myself and if you look at sites you can actually go look at websites um and you can see how how they were created i think a lot of the, like a lot of websites will have a signature like created with this created with that you can see it on some of the pages but there's a lot of really great um a really great square space sites out there i mean i there's there's a food blogger that i read all the time that um he uses square pace in his site square space I, mm -hmm. I think i just said square pace but <laughs> it's there it's beautiful you can create a beautiful website um it you brought up something right there that i think deserves you know deserves to be discussed and that is the writing let's say you're going to write let's say you committed to writing a monthly blog um, whatever, whatever service you use, whether that's, um, you know, hosting, like whatever you're hosting or whatever site builder you're using, the writing of it is the easy part. Like you will basically work on, you know, it'll just look like any old sort of word processing document. You can, you can just write where things become complicated is that when you're writing what's called the back end of your website, it appears on the front end however the site is designed. So like your site might, you know, you might be typing on what looks like a word processing document, but then when the, the blog goes up, it's got red text with a black background. And, you know, so those are all the things that building and designing does is like, you know, taking that word, that document that you're just writing a blog in and turning it into the beautiful colors, the beautiful background, the beautiful feel that you want making sure that the image nests just perfectly, you know, it doesn't look all wonky. Um, I have so wonky yeah. stuff because I'm not oh, a designer. <laughs> oh, I hate that feeling when you're like, you go to, I always press like preview a blog mm -hmm. and then it'll be like, that looks 99% looks great. Why is that picture all the way over there? Yeah. And <laughs> that, that looks terrible. My journalism teacher would have, would have, you know, been furious. So yeah, so maybe simplicity if that if if you're not going to get in there and tinker with codes and frames and all that stuff, which few of us are really care to do, um, or you don't have like I have a friend who's a web designer is their like 16 year old kid, and hmm. that's great, you know that's great. Uh, that's not everybody, so do something that works for you. All right, so takeaways, um, you can find uh, a, a drag and drop, easy peasy 
like template website builder through like Squarespace or or WordPress. There are a lot of cool things about WordPress. I have to say there's a lot of like plugins. I'm like, ooh, I wish I could do that on my Squarespace site. Right. <laughs> so there's, you know, if you if you have a little bit more, if you're a little bit more savvy, WordPress might be the way to do it. Um, I like Squarespace, there's Weebly, there's Wix. Um, and then get your URL, get your hosting, um, and then have a reader magnet with a mailing list capture something. I mean, that's the main purpose for having the website is to get emails um, signed up and to um, and to keep people on there as long as possible, like Eric said. And the other point is if you're running an author service business, maybe you have an author services page, maybe your site is devoted to an array of author businesses, your site is there to convert them to, you know, you, mm -hmm. you put out a blog. When I put out a blog, it's very, I'm, I'm there to inform a prospective client, but ultimately at the end of it, the, the drive is if you still need help with this topic, get in touch with me like that. And a lot, I mean, that's a lot of websites is that a lot of that's content marketing. So, but again, it does, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just have to have a good message. I mean, I think it all comes back to content, right? We can just end it on that in some way. Like it's all about content. If you're genuine, if you have a good message, you have a good service. People are going to buy your books. People are going to hire you for their service. That's, that's the key. Cool. I know there's more that I wanted to talk about with that, but I think it will fit more nicely with the SEO conversation. So I can post right. that and on it. <laughs> I'll throw this out and, and I will throw this out there at the beginning of the next one. If anyone listening to this, listened to all of this and said, Eric, you got me started, but I don't really know what to do. I will talk to anyone about this. Um, if all the things I've done as an author and a business person I think a lot of the mis I, I've made more mistakes on the site side of things than anything else, and I would I would be willing to talk to anyone at no cost other than time to talk about like, you know, to maybe help someone avoid some of the pitfalls that I walked into. But in wait, I didn't walk the, in in terms of website building. Yeah, in terms of the in terms of the website, and I was just gonna say I didn't walk into some of these. I ran into some of these screaming and yelling, like you know. So like, there's a lot of ways that you can. A lot of the ways that you can go about creating a site, like, can be really. I don't, I don't want to say they can be setbacks, but I think that there's a lot of ways you can capitalize in the early stages to save yourself headaches down the line, and that's. I'd love to share some of that experience with people. So get in touch with me. Right on. And how should they do that? Uh, come to uh, email me at ericmertz at gmail.com. And I would, we'll set up a time to talk and yeah, we can share just again, here's, here's what happened. Here's what works, here, works for me. Here's what doesn't. Here's what I would avoid if I was you. <laughs> All right. Sounds awesome. Well, thanks for talking with me, Eric, and thanks for all y'all listening. And next week we will be talking about SEO and Ooh, what which, that even we means. Should, yeah, we should <laughs> search engine optimization. We, we've been using the acronym and just like, you know, dangling Throwing it out it there. That's our hook. You had to listen <laughs> to the whole thing to find out what SEO stood for. <laughs> cool. All right. Bye for now. Bye for now.